This is the video lecture on debt investments. Over the course of the next two video lectures, we're going to be talking about different investments that a company can make. But in this particular video, we're going to focus more on the debt investments. Now up until this time, we've talked a lot about different kinds of debts, and we've talked about bonds and stock. But the difference here is, we would actually be making the investment ourselves. See, up until this time, we've always been the company selling the bonds or selling the stock. So now we get to see things from the other perspective, actually purchasing the investments. And that's what we're going to do in this lecture. We're going to purchase debt investments. Now, when we talk about debt investments, what we're really talking about are bonds because a bond is a debt instrument. So we could possibly invest our money in bonds. And if we do that, we have to make a decision about how to classify that investment. And we have three different possibilities. It could be either held to maturity, trading, or available for sale. So the first possibility, held to maturity. Now if it's our intention to purchase this bond and to hold this bond as an investment, until it fully matures, if that's our intention, then we would classify this investment as held to maturity. So if that's the case, I would have to record a journal entry. So say we have a company, we're going to purchase a bond. We're going to buy a $10,000 bond that happens to have a 10% contract rate. The bond pays interest semi-annually. It will eventually mature in five years. We're going to record the purchase. Now you'll notice that this bond entry looks quite a bit different from the bond entries that we've done in the past. The reason for that is we're no longer selling bonds. We're the one buying the bond. So that's a different situation. In this case, I'm making an investment. Now the title that I use is Long-Term Investment HTM. Why do I use that title? Because when you buy a bond and you intend to hold on to it until it matures, that's more of a long-term type of investment. And then we put HTM to literally stand for held to maturity. And that just communicates our intention in terms of what we want to do with this investment. So I debit that for 10000 and then I credit cash 10000 to show that I'm spending the money. Now from time to time, in fact in this case every six months, since this is semi-annual interest, I will receive interest payments. Now the amount of interest payment that I receive depends on the interest rate. Now if you go back for just a second, look at what the interest rate was. It was a 10% $10,000 bond. So normally, I would be receiving $1,000 of interest, but since it is a semi-annual payment, I will cut that amount in half. So I will actually receive $500. So I will debit cash, $500. I will credit interest revenue, $500. And ultimately, over the course of the five years, this entry will be recorded 10 times or every six months. And isn't this interesting because in our previous lecture on bonds, we paid interest and it was an interest expense. Well, now that we're seeing it from the other point of view, we're the one getting the interest and it's interest revenue. So it's like you're getting to see the other side of the coin on a transaction like this. And then eventually in five years, this investment will mature. And once it matures, we will record a journal entry when we receive the money. And that is a debit to cash for 10000 and we credit and remove the long-term investment held to maturity, 10000 So that's an example of a held to maturity bond. Now a second category that we had of the three was the category of trading. This means that our intent is not to hold on to this bond, but rather to try to get rid of it as soon as possible. 
We want to aggressively and actively trade this bond as soon as we can to turn a profit. So that's a very different type of investment. So we will record this in a slightly different way. So again, we have the exact same example, the exact same bond, but this time the only difference is the company does not intend to hold it to, a, to maturity. Instead, they intend to trade it. So you see there's only one small difference. When we debit long-term investment, instead of HTM, we just change that to trading. And we still credit cash. So very, very similar. Again, we will be receiving the interest payments. But the good news is it will look exactly the same. The fact that it's a different category has no bearing on this particular entry. And also, this bond will eventually mature. Now, we want to try to sell it and make a profit, but if we never do have an opportunity to do that, then we might end up actually keeping it. And if that's the case, just like last time, when it matures, we would get our money back and we would remove the investment. It's also possible for a third category, and this category is called available for sale. Now this category has a very odd meaning. The meaning of this category is that it is neither held to maturity nor trading. So in other words, this is a catch-all category. So if we don't intend necessarily to hold it until it matures, but then again we don't necessarily want to trade it, we're just sort of unsure what we want to do, then we would put it in this very generic category of available for sale. Again, the exact same example. The only difference here is it's classified as available for sale. So we will just change this to AFS, which signifies available for sale. And again, the interest payment would be the same and the maturity would be the same. So it really only affects one thing. Depending on how you classify that debt investment, it just changes the title slightly that you use for the investment itself. And as you can see, this is a lot easier to account for than when we sell bonds. Purchasing bonds is much easier. Of course, of all the investments we make, the debt investments are the easiest to record. And we're going to see in our next lecture what to do when we buy stock because that will be a different type of investment. That will actually be an equity investment.